Dr. Monk, you're about to speak on the topic of best medical treatment uh, for low-grade ovarian cancer. Could you just summarize what your presentation will be focusing on? So low-grade serous ovarian cancers are one of the rare histologic subtypes. Two others, mucinous and clear cells, are also rare. It's not the topic of my presentation, but low-grade serous tumors. Low-grade serous tumors are distinct from high-grade serous cancers both histologically, also at the molecular level, and certainly in treatment. So low-grade serous tumors uh, are morphologically more well differentiated. They have bigger cells. Um, molecularly, they show perturbations in the RAS, RAF, MEC, ERK pathway, as opposed to high-grade serous tumors, which are poorly differentiated. P53 is associated almost universally, and also associated with BRCA mutations. Now, my presentation will focus on the fact that these low-grade serous tumors are maybe not as chemotherapy resistant as we thought. They do indeed respond to treatment, including carboplatin and paclitaxel, perhaps not the same level as high-grade serous tumors, but they still do respond. We also have other categories of medications, including anti-angiogenic medications, uh, anti-hormonal um, uh, medications such as letrozole, and even single agent non-platinum agents such as pegylated liposomal doxorubicin is active. And then based on the molecular signature, there's been a lot of interest in MEK inhibitors. Uh, MEK inhibitors uh, uh, initially have been negative in a randomized trial called the MILO trial to presented at the International Gynecologic Cancer Society later in 2019 in Rio de Janeiro. But still, MEK inhibitors do have activity just not superior to chemotherapy and are part of the treatment paradigm. So the treatment involves radical surgery or staging if it's an early stage patient, carboplatin paclitaxel, frequently with maintenance bevacizumab or letrozole, and then at the time of recurrence, either retreatment with platinum and paclitaxel or liposomal doxorubicin or bevacizumab or even a MEK inhibitor. So that's a great summary because these are not as chemotherapy resistant as we thought and the options are broad and I encourage you to treat your patients with all of these modalities, hopefully so they can live longer and live better. In February, you have published an article in Oncology Life um, with the title, Moving Away from IP Chemotherapy in Advanced um, Ovarian Cancer. How did that article came about, come about and what were its main conclusions? We're always looking for new ways to treat advanced ovarian cancer, certainly new agents, but also new routes of administration. And one route of administration certainly is placing it in the belly, intraperitoneal chemotherapy, and we used to think that that would work. However, most recently, soon to be published in the Journal of Clinical Oncology, GOG Protocol 252, which shows that it's completely inactive when compared to the intravenous alternative. That study had bevacizumab in alarm, so maybe that made it more difficult to interpret. But today, intraperitoneal chemotherapy is rarely practiced, and if it is practiced, probably only using a heated intraperitoneal approach called HIPEC at the time of interval debulking. Just one more last question uh, as the coffee break is starting now. Um, could you just give us a quick outlook in the next 10 years? What will happen in terms of prevention of ovarian cancer and also in terms of uh, long-term survival rates or even curing the disease completely? So ISDO, interval salpingectomy and delayed oophorectomy in women with BRCA mutations. We're trying to eradicate all BRCA-associated ovarian cancers, doing ID, or excuse me, IS, interval salpingectomy while they're young, and then delayed oophorectomy when the menopause is closer. And we're also trying to get better treatments, combinations, PARP inhibitors, and, and uh, uh, immune oncology agents, and also immune oncology agents and anti-angiogenics. So I expect the numbers of ovarian cancer patients to fall as we try to do salpingectomies, particularly in high-risk women with BRAC-associated mutations, and the cure rates to go up as we develop new combinations of IO, PARP inhibitors, and anti-angiogenics. Dr. Mark, thank you so much for your insights. Thank, thank you. you.